bioflavones, and they're antioxidants, they're very powerful antioxidants. Um, <clears throat> vitamin C is used to make your, your tissues stronger. So collagen is the building block of all of your tissue, skin, hair, uh, uh, muscles, bones, and uh, vitamin C is used to strengthen those, uh, that, those collagen functions. Um, vitamin C is also a very powerful antioxidant. It's involved in the antioxidant cascade. Um, the, the, um, yeah, the, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, okay. So vitamins, I'm going to group together B1, B2, and B5. Um, B1 is thiamine, B2 is riboflavin, B5 is pantothenic acid. Um, I group them together because they're involved in the, uh, the production of energy in the body's metabolism. The actual function of them gets a little bit complicated. It gets into some complex biochemistry. But for the most part, all of these three uh, B vitamins are found in multivitamins in sufficient quantities uh, for optimal function, and they're not particularly interesting. So let's move on. Vitamin B3 is niacin. Um, it is available, there's three main forms, there's nicotinamide, nicotinic acid, and an acetolic nicotinate. I just want to be clear, this has nothing to do with nicotine. The molecule is kind of similar, which is why it's named that way. Um, the nicotinic acid form of, of niacin is the most effective way to increase your HDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol. And nothing else comes close to its effectiveness. Um, for increasing HDL except high intensity exercise. Um, unfortunately, this is also the form of niacin that really leads to what's called the niacin flush. It causes your, your skin to become very red and itchy for a few minutes. It's kind of unpleasant. If you take it consistently for a few weeks, that flush goes away and you don't get it again as long as you keep taking it. The other way you can avoid that is if it is safe for you to do so, take an aspirin or an NSAID like Tylenol or, um, or Advil or something that will prevent that flush from happening. Uh, next slide, please. Vitamin B6, pyridoxine, it's the most commonly encountered form. I just talk about this briefly because there's some thought that maybe taking very high doses of vitamin B6 could potentially lead to toxicity. The research isn't super supportive of that, but there's enough that I mention it. Um, it's involved with uh, neurotransmitters uh, production, which are the signaling molecules between your nerve cells. Next slide, please. Um, vitamin B7 is biotin. Uh, biotin is kind of interesting in that there's some good evidence that shows that if you increase biotin in your diet, or if you take biotin supplementation, it can help in improve your hair and nails. Um, it's involved with the metabolism of fats and proteins, so you need it in order to metabolize food properly. And there's also some evidence, um, it's pretty good evidence, there's not a lot of it, that taking biotin, if you're diabetic, can help to decrease your fasting blood glucose levels, your fasting blood sugar. Uh, next slide. Um, okay, folate B12. These two vitamins, B9 is folate, it's most commonly just called folate, hardly ever see B9. Um, and B12, they, they go together and they should be taken together. Um, they're involved with your cell's ability to reproduce. So if you don't have enough of it, you will develop, um, certain, type, you'll develop certain kinds of anemia. That's very characteristic. Um, their function is, is, uh, uh, is all over the map. One of the biggest things that it does is it helps to get rid of homocysteine. Homocysteine is an amino acid that's produced as, the, as a normal met metabolic product from, from eating foods. And homocysteine is extremely irritating to the lining of your arteries. And if it builds up, it can lead to um, arterial plaques and, and heart disease. Um, if you just take folate by itself, it can mask B12 deficiency because it serves something close to the same function. And if you do wind up with B12 deficiency, you can wind up with permanent irreversible neurological damage. Um, so it's really important to, that they always be taken together. Next slide. Vitamin B12, uh, folate really just comes in the one form, folate or folic acid. It's really the same thing. 
Vitamin B12 comes in three forms that are available over the counter. Cyanocobalamin, methyl, and hydroxycobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is the cheapest form to produce. It's the cheapest form to buy. It's okay if you have a normal stomach and digestive system. If you, uh, as you, as we get older and our stomachs become less able to process B12, uh, the form hydroxycobalamin, which you can get, or methylcobalamin, which you can get at any good, um, at any good uh, health food store, we also have it in our office, uh, are more easily absorbed by the body. Um, B12 is an enormous molecule, and as such, it requires special help to get it into your bloodstream. Um, so if people with certain stomach disorders are lacking the ability to absorb it properly, in which case it's most commonly encountered as an injection. You can get it as an injection and you completely bypass the, um, the absorption of it through your stomach. Yes? Uh, I understand um, the years they say B12 gives you energy. Yes. Uh, you can address that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, B12 is involved with the with cells growth and reproduction, and it's also involved with the um, ability of the cell to make ATP, which is the energy of the cell, the energy currency of the cell. And so when you're taking B12, it helps to increase your cell's ability to make energy. When your cells can more efficiently make energy, you feel that you have more energy. Okay? Uh, next slide. Um, okay, so that's that's all the vitamins. Okay, so there are no other vitamins to speak of. We're going to talk about minerals briefly. Um, minerals are uh, trace minerals, things, different elements that you need in your diet in order to function properly. Some of these are really important. Some of these you get mostly from from your diet. Some of these really do require supplementation. Um, the big ones are sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, iron, and sulfur. There's some trace minerals, copper, zinc, manganese, selenium. Uh, most of these come in more than one form, and this is where we start getting into really absorption problems. So we're going to show this in just a moment. Next slide, please. Um, sodium, potassium, you get this mostly enough from your diet. You don't, most people don't really need to supplement these. If you're taking a diuretic, your doctor may suggest that you take potassium, because most diuretics can deplete potassium from the body. Mostly, you don't need sodium because mostly we get enough sodium from from our uh, diets or probably too much sodium. Next slide please. Calcium. Okay, here's here's where we're going to get into a little demonstration. Uh, calcium it comes in a lot of different forms. There's car calcium carbonate. Um, Tums is calcium carbonate. It's the cheapest form to make. It's the cheapest form to buy. It's the worst form to take. And I'm going to show why in a minute. Um, there's calcium phosphate, um, there's calcium lactate, and there's calcium citrate. Calcium citrate is one of the more expensive forms. It's, one of, it's also one of the most well-absorbed in the body. Um, let's just do a quick demonstration. What I have here, this is hydrochloric acid, which is essentially, this is diluted to the concentration of stomach acid in the body. What we're going to do here is I'm going to put this into this beaker. I'm going to drop in a couple of tums so you can see what happened. It will react a little bit and then it's going to just sit there. Okay, these are tums here. So we can drop these in. So you'll see there's a little bit of bubbling, fizzing. Um, to make this effect a little bit more dramatic because the tablet takes a long time to react, I've powdered a couple of tablets here that I can put in here and watch what happens when we react to these. We get a rather large amount of gas that's carbon dioxide and then the calcium carbonate neutralizes your stomach acid. Well the problem is you need acid in order to absorb the calcium. You just neutralize your stomach acid. You ever see a problem with this? Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Basically, now, now that we've neutralized that little bit of acid in there, those calcium tablets are really just going to sit there. And they would be sitting in your stomach after they just neutralized your stomach acid. And they're going to sit there. And they're going to sit there. And they're going to sit there. And they're going to putrefy in your stomach. 
and that's going to potentially lead to stomach cancer or intestinal cancer as they sit there and they putrefy in your stomach. This is a problem with calcium carbonate and why it's absolutely worthless for calcium supplementation. Um, calcium citrate, we had that with us, you'd see in stomach, normal stomach acid, it absorbs slowly. All forms of calcium are a bit difficult to absorb, but calcium citrate is absorbed the best. Next slide, please. Um, so as we see this, I just talked about this. Next slide. Uh, citrate form is the best. Next slide. Okay. So we can watch and let that let that work while we continue to talk and see what happens. Uh, magnesium is um, magnesium and calcium work together. Sodium and potassium work opposite each other in the cells in the body. Calcium and magnesium work the same way. Calcium and magnesium are very important for the function of your heart muscle. Okay. Magnesium is very important. People who are prone to cramping with moderate exercise or even light exercise are probably magnesium deficient. Magnesium is very important for, um, for the relaxation of muscle tissue. Um, it's very important for the proper growth of bones and for the function of nerves and muscles. Um, many, many, many enzymes in the body use magnesium. Um, there's, there's, I can't speak highly enough of magnesium. It's, a, it's, a, it's an antispasmodic. Um, let's go to the next slide. Magnesium comes in a number of different forms. Magnesium oxide is the cheapest form that you'll most likely see in the health food store or in the pharmacy. It's absolutely useless. It doesn't absorb well. Um, it mostly sits there and has the same problem that calcium carbonate does. Magnesium citrate is pretty good. Magnesium aspartate or magnesium malate, you can find them, are the best forms. Potassium, I'm sorry, the uh, professional line supplements that we carry are the most absorbable form, which is magnesium aspartate. Next slide, please. Iron. Um, mostly this is found in women's multivitamins and as its own supplement. We recommend that men below the age of 65 do not supplement with iron because iron can build up to toxic levels in the body. It leads to a condition called hemochromatosis, which is really bad and we don't want to go there. Um, so unless you're specific type of anemic, your doctor will tell you to take iron. If you're going to take iron, ladies, um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, best form of iron to take is ferrous fumarate. That's in the brochure that I handed out. Now, um, the, let's, let's talk for just a second about the Federal Trade Commission and what they allow vitamin manufacturers to say, or food manufacturers to say is actually in your food. So if your food contains, or your vitamin contains iron, as iron filings, so it looks like somebody took a, took a bar of steel and took a file to it, filed off some iron, and threw it in your food, which is actually what's in a lot of food. They can say it has iron in it, even though that's really not very absorbable. Um, if you take total cereal and you crush it up really well, and you hold a magnet up to it, you'll see iron filings stick to the magnet. And with the lentils. I'm sorry? Lentils. Mm -hmm. Um, there's all different forms of iron. The best is ferrous fumarate that is available. You can usually find that. We carry that in our office. Um, um, iron gluconate, ferrous gluconate is also okay for absorption. Fumarate is the best form. Next slide. Uh, sulfur. Uh, there's a lot of sulfur in the body. Sulfur is in the same group chemically as oxygen. And so the body uses it in very much the same ways that it uses oxygen, incorporates it into, um, into proteins. Your, uh, if you have very curly hair, it's because your body puts an awful lot of sulfur into your hair. And that's why when, you, when hair burns, it smells sulfurous. It's a very unpleasant smell. Um, dietary supplementation of sulfur is very important because it helps to keep your body's level of inflammation down. There's a particular supplement that we use in the office all the time that's called MSM. Uh, it's very useful for keeping inflammation down, especially after an injury or if you have uh, many types of arthritis. It's very useful and we carry that. Um, it's best, that's best taken as a powder in order to get a proper dose of it. It's really non-toxic. It's about as toxic as water. Um, the mechanism, though, of why it reduces inflammation is not so well understood. 
Um, you'd be surprised at just how much of medicine